everybody, it's Pac-Man from Drunk Monkey Garage. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. If you're not, please subscribe and hit that like button. Before we get started on the new mailbox project, I wanted to delve into the crystal effects solution a little more and get to know some of the science behind it so we can get more consistent results. I've been experimenting a little bit and what I'm finding is pretty interesting. It looks like the type of urea that you get does make a difference. Uh, there's a couple that I've tried that aren't as good as the other ones. I bought a batch of urea off of Amazon and it wasn't very pure and it gave us this cloudy looking mixture. So I went back to Amazon and I looked for a more pelletized version of the urea. And what I found was this. It's actually like little, it reminds me of those styrofoam beads, but it's urea. And when I mixed that up, it gave me a really clear solution. And this solution, I tried it out last night, and it worked really well. So, what I'm going to do is walk you through the procedure that I did to create this solution. So, bear with me through the kind of dry, sciencey part of this, and hopefully you'll find it as interesting as I have. So here are the two ureas that we have. The first one I bought was the Alpha Chemicals urea. I got that off of Amazon. They call it a fine prill, but it looks more like a granulated urea to me. And the color on this if you compare it to this, is an off-white instead of a pure white. And you can see little chunks of other stuff in there. Now, I'm not saying this Alpha Chemicals urea is not good to use. I did use this on the first mailbox that we did. And I had great results with it. It's a little harder to mix. Um... It took a little more mixing and filtering to get uh, a cleanish solution. This is what I ended up with, and I don't know if you can see it, but there's quite a bit of sediment in the bottom of this one. And I just feel like if you have a cleaner solution, you're going to get a better crystal. Now, the other one was a generic brand. I'll link it in the description below. But it was also off of Amazon. And this is basically the way it was packaged. It, it came in a little bit. I ordered five pounds. So it came in a little bit bigger Ziploc bag. I divided it up into smaller bags just so... I could keep it fresh, but yeah, it basically came in a Ziploc bag inside of a box, a shipping box. So it is generic, but this is truly what they call prills, which is kind of a uh, pelletized looking uh, thing. But this dissolves much easier in water, and the result is a clear solution with no sediment in the bottom. I did try this out last night, and I got outstanding results with it. 
Uh, we'll go over a little bit of the way I'm mixing it. I did get a little bit of a kind of a specialty tool to do that with. I'll give you a little sneak peek of that right now. This is a magnetic stirrer, which also has heating capabilities. Usually find these in science labs and stuff like that. It comes with a little plastic coated metal stirrer. You just stick that down in there and there's a magnet underneath the plate which spins that and stirs up your your solution it also has a way to put a thermometer down in your solution that way you can hold it at a steady 120 degrees now if you're familiar with urea when you put it into the water, it cools the water rather quickly. So having the capability to heat it up while you're mixing it is a big help. Makes things a lot easier. So I'll walk through the steps of mixing up the solution. I did also try a Epsom salt solution, but the jet dry that I use as a wetting agent does not mix with the Epsom salt solution. So the jet dry didn't work. I did try the ox gall and neither one of those would let the solution spread out evenly like it should. Just kind of beat it up. So I got to figure out what kind of wetting agent I can use for the Epsom salts before we can try that out. On the outside of the bottle here, it is, it is crystallizing. So if we can just get it to spread out smoothly without beating up, I think it might be a viable crystal solution also. So we'll do some more experiments on that later. But for now, we're going to stick with the urea mixture. And I'll show you how to mix that up. First thing we want to do is tear out the container on the scale. And then I've got, this is just purified water from uh, Dollar General. You can get it anywhere. So then we're going to add 100 milliliters. There are markings on the side of this container, but I like to go by weight just to be a little more accurate. And there we go. That's 100 milliliters of water. So now we'll take you over to the magnetic stirrer and show you the heating and stirring process. So we've got our container, glass container of water. What I'm going to do is drop this magnetic stirring pill in and as you can see when we put it on there there's a magnet underneath the plate that will activate that So the stirring action helps in two ways. It helps heat the water evenly and quickly, and it also helps dissolve the urea. So at this point, we are going to turn the heat on. We're going to turn, we're going to drop our thermometer in there and turn that on. Right there, it's showing 82 degrees. 
We're going to heat that up to about 120 degrees. And I find at the very beginning, I turn it up pretty high. That way it'll heat up quickly. And then once we get up to temperature, we can back it down quite a ways and maintain that temperature. Now we're going to weigh out our urea, which means we have to tear out this container. And we want 100 milliliters by weight of the urea prills. You want to be precise with this to get the best crystal results. There's a hundred milliliters. Now what I like to do with this is tear out another container and put about half of it in. So I like to add the urea half at a time because it cools down the water. There's 50 and 50. Our water is up to 105 degrees now. So a little bit more and we'll be ready to add the first half of the urea. We're at 120 now. Gonna add the first half of the urea. You'll see how quickly it cools the water down. So what we're going to do is turn our heat back up. Get that back up to 120 and then we'll add the other half of the urea. So it's taking us about five minutes to get back up to 120 degrees. Uh, we're almost there. But as you can see, all of the urea prills are dissolved now. So we're going to take a look at this. We're at 116, 17. As soon as we hit 120, we're going to add the rest of our urea. There we are. And once again, you can see how it drops the temperature of the water. So we're going to sit and let this mix and heat back up to 120 degrees. And then after it's back up to temp, we're going to let it sit and mix for about another five minutes. So I'll put you on time lapse for that and I'll see you when we get done.
So now we have a clear solution. All of our urea is dissolved. I carefully take this off. Let that cool just a little bit. I've got my jar here that I have the first mixture that I mixed up. And what I use is a funnel and just a regular paint strainer. This will filter out any contaminants in the urea and it'll also catch your pill. We're just going to pour that into our bottle. Looks like we had a piece that was not urea. It didn't dissolve. And if you notice on the pill, it actually catches metallic fragments that are in the urea. So now we have pure, clean urea crystal solution. I started filming this video prior to going on vacation a few weeks ago and actually had forgotten about it. So I wanted to share it with you before we do the crystal over the Lumilor, just so you guys can see how I mix it. I did see that I left one step out, which is putting a couple of drops of the finished jet dry in. This acts as a wetting agent and allows the crystal solution to evenly flow over the surface without beating up. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit that bell icon for notification of future videos when we apply the crystal solution over the Lumilor. Um, I'll go over all the steps of how I apply it and how to top coat it with a contrasting color. Uh, those are very important steps in getting good crystals, so you don't want to miss that. And until then, cheers.